Welcome back, everyone. We've made it to the end of chapter 13. So we've discussed our microfilaments, our actin filaments. We've discussed our tubulin microtubules. And now our last cytoskeleton component are our intermediate filaments. Intermediate filaments are abundant in most animal cells, although interestingly, they're not found in the cytoplasm of plant cells. Um, one important um, intermediate filament is keratin, which is part of the structures that grow from your skin um, and animals, so like our fingernails, um, hair, some um, animal, other animals have other structures made of keratin. Intermediate filaments are the most stable, so we don't see as much of a plus in, minus in, growing, dissociating. Um, they're also the least soluble components of the cytos cytoskeleton. And they are important in supporting the entire cytoskeleton as a group. Intermediate filaments are really different from amino acid composition um, are in amino acid composition in different types of tissue. And so we have six different groups. The class one are our acidic keratins. These are found in epithelial cells and are important in mechanical strength. Class two are our basic or neutral keratins. These are also found in epithelial cells and in our, are important in mechanical strength. Proteins in class one and class two make up the keratins that are found lining your um, body, covering your body cavities um, and surfaces covering your body. Class three includes vermintin, which is in connective tissue, desmin, which is in muscle cells, and glial fibrillary acidic proteins, or GFAP, which is found in glial cells. Vermintin is important in fibroblasts to maintain their cell shape. Um, it's also found in cells of mesenchymal origin and lens of the eye. Desmin is important, especially in smooth muscle cells, to um, support the contraction of our smooth muscle cells. And the glial fibrillary acidic proteins are important in our glial cells and astrocytes to maintain their cell shape. Class four are the neurofilament or NF proteins. These are found in both central and peripheral nerves and are helping with axon strength and determining the size of axons. Class five includes the nuclear lamins, A, B, and C. These form um, a network along the inner surface of the nuclear membrane so they are found in all of our cell types, all, all of our nuclei. Um, they help give us that nuclear scaffold, give the shape to the nucleus. And class six is the nestin. Um, nestin makes up the neurofilaments in the nerve cells of embryos, but a lot of their function is unknown. That's something that maybe one day you'll come back to me and say, I solved this, I did this research, and now I can tell you what this does. So these different types of intermediate filaments found in different cell types, doing different things in different cell types, allow you to actually distinguish different animal cells from each other just by looking at what kind of intermediate filament proteins they contain. The fundamental subunits of intermediate filaments are dimers. And compared to actin being a globular protein, intermediate filaments are are fibrous, they're long fibers that they wrap around in these dimers. And the dimers will assemble into these longer structures. Um, so each have a homologous central rod-like domain. Um, and they flank the central helical domain. Um, and their N and C terminal domains can vary differently, can vary, differ greatly among different proteins. Intermediate filaments have an important tension-bearing role, so they help support some of that tension within the cell um, and coming from outside of the cell. In neurons, 
your intermediate filaments are dynamically transported and remodeled. Um, and intermediate filaments are less susceptible to chemical attack. If you remember, they're a little bit more stable. So it's not quite as easy to be attacking their either formation or disassembly compared to our microtubules and microfilaments. Because they are really good at me mechanical stress, they help resist bending when a cell is compressed and help maintain that cell shape. Um, and they also serve as contractile elements that can generate ten tension. Um, and so intermediate filaments are elastic and able to withstand those tensile forces. Cytoskeletal elements can be integrated within each other. These intermediate filaments, microfilaments, and microtubules, they're not all just three different worlds doing their own thing in the cells. They can be connected by um, linker proteins called spectraplakins. Spectraplakins. These connect our three different kinds of the cytoskeleton. One kind is plectin, which is found where intermediate filaments connect to microfilaments and microtubules. All right, that's the end of chapter 13. Um, so I will see you soon. Let me know if you have any questions during your studies.